Hey, y'all. Thanks for checking out the Extraordinary Podcast. This is our season six finale, where we're going to be talking about the fifth key, which is our initial inspections as part of the eight keys to great process. But before we dive into that, I want to take just a few minutes to thank all my guests and the people who made this season possible. Uh, we had a lot of help from a lot of people, as usual. All my guests, Michaela Marsh, Kelly War, Amanda Goins, Brent Basham, Chris Kremetzos, Melinda Livingston, Rob Elliott, Dan Williams, Eric Nine, Adrian Dean, and Johnny Murphy. Many of my guests were booked through a couple of different services, and I would not have been able to get these guests without the help of PodFest, Podit, PodMax, and Alignable. Please take the time to check these guys out. Uh, They are a tremendous resource for a variety of different things. Alignable is great for small business networking. Podit is great for finding guests and uh, other podcasts to be on if you have something that you would like to share. And, of course, PodFest is an amazing event that happens now more than once a year because of the virtual situation uh, where there's just a tremendous amount of networking and knowledge being shared and not just in the podcasting space but in the digital media world altogether so i encourage you to check them out they've got a big event coming up in march and um, i will be speaking there so uh, be sure to check them out Um, there's also several podcasts i would like to take the time to recognize i've either been on their podcast or they've played a role in helping me with my podcast and of course that's the rob elliott podcast Right off the bat, uh, the Heightened Life podcast with Amanda Goins. I had the chance to speak with her on a couple of different topics and had a lot of fun uh, getting to know her on her show. Digital Dads is a podcast hosted by Brent Basham. Uh, It's not currently being produced, but there's a lot of really great episodes that are archived and still there. Uh, Definitely worth checking out, especially if you're a parent, uh, mom or dad. And last but not least, CausePod with Matthew Passy. That's one of the organizations that we highlighted in in the episode with Brent Basham. Matt's doing some really cool things. You know, we like to talk about different charities and organizations that are making a difference. Well, he has an entire podcast solely dedicated to profiling and highlighting those people and those podcasts that are out there making a difference and doing some good work out there. So please take the time to check out Cause Pods as well. There's a variety of different charities that we talk about at the end of each episode. I won't go into each of those individually, uh, but I do encourage you to check out those charities and do anything that you can to support them. The equipment used to produce this show, we use the Zoom H6 recording device for all of our recordings. Microphones are Audio-Technica, nothing special or particular about them, just SLR mics. Uh, We use Hindenburg Pro for all of our editing uh, and Zoom and Squadcast for our remote hosting platforms. So please take the time to learn about those companies or if you want to know how to get a podcast similar production value to this one, uh, that's the products that we're using. So and we'll have links to all of those resources in the show notes. So before we jump into the fifth key... As many of you know, I've had some personal situations and some struggles that got me really off track this season and the inconsistency in delivering new episodes and new content was reflected in that. Uh, So right out of the gate, I wanted to apologize to all my listeners and anyone who has supported the show uh, for not being consistent and for not being there for you guys. I pride myself on that all the way up until this season. I've done a really good job at being consistent every week and delivering good content. Uh, But I got to tell you, this um, this these past few months, I went through some challenges that I just did not expect. And really, they got me off track Um, during this season. I stopped doing a lot of the things that I knew that I should be doing. And just to let you guys know, that you know, practice what you preach and full disclosure, I fell off a lot of the habits and routines that I preach about on this show in particular my three habits in 30 minutes which uh, I'm such a big proponent of you know over the course of these last few months and over the holidays I got away from those habits and um, went through a cycle of some depression and some struggles Uh, I'm not going to get into all the nitty-gritty about that there'll be more 
conversation about some of that maybe later on. But um, at this point, I just wanted to recognize you guys for being patient with me and for sticking around and continuing to show up. Uh, my goal is to do a lot better job this season and get back to a more consistent level and to have weekly content out there for you guys. Um, but yeah, over the course of last season, not only did I lose some of the good habits, but I also got back into some bad habits. Um, I allowed the problems and the situation that I was facing to consume me to a certain extent. And I allowed all these distractions to keep me from the work. And that's easy to do when there's not, when there's not a job that you have to show up for every single day when you're self-motivated to begin with. Uh, when you lose that motivation, when you lose that sense of urgency, um, it can be really, really tough. Um, and so I just wanted to be able to share that with you guys. That being said, so one of the things I recognized as I was going through some of this depression and some of these struggles is that those situations allowed me to waste my time and skills, talents, and intelligence on non-productive issues. It basically created a distraction. It allowed me to not be focused on the important work, but to be focused on things that weren't really important. Um, I lost some friends over the course of this season that I did not expect, um, but also had some that I lost on purpose, making sure that I'm surrounding myself with the best possible individuals. I gained a lot of insight, and I got to have a lot of personal reflection. Um, one of the best parts about all of this is that getting kicked in the teeth will allow you to kind of take a hard look at yourself and look at what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong and areas that you can improve. Um, so that was a real bonus that came from all of this was an opportunity to self-reflect and to have an honest conversation with myself about areas that I could be improving in my own life. And I think that it's fair to say that you know, we're all going to have these cycles. You're not always going to be able to stay on track. Everything's not going to be great. There's going to be highs and lows through all of this. And I think understanding that the lows will come will help me to prepare for them. And I'm hoping that the next time one of these personal situations comes up that I will be better prepared to deal with it and to be not only to deal with the situation, but to stay more focused on what is important, more focused on the work at hand and the things that I need to be worried about instead of the distractions. But along with those new opportunities and new challenges, we have a big announcement to make. The podcast is now officially sponsored by Atlantic Custom Group who specialize in the unique and inspiring. Atlantic Custom Group is happy to address all your home improvement needs. You can find out more information about Atlantic Custom Group on their Facebook page. That's Atlantic, like the ocean, Custom Group. Or you can call directly for an estimate or consultation at 770-827-7591. I'm very excited about this new relationship and the opportunities that it will allow for us to continue to grow the show and to continue to develop the content for the eight keys to great and having a remodel company that aligns with the process of, of renovating our own lives is the perfect marriage between us. So I'm very excited to have this relationship. I'm very excited to have this opportunity to continue to do what we're doing and continue to spread the word and help folks along the way. So, uh, on that note, thank you so much, all of you guys out there, for sticking around and bearing with me through this challenging season. Um, I look forward to a more consistent and exciting season seven. Uh, thankfully, through all of this, we were actually able to get quite a bit of recordings done. So most of my guests for season seven have already been recorded. So uh, I've got some really cool folks that we're going to be introducing you to uh, and some really interesting stories along the way. So be sure to stay tuned for season seven. And without further ado, the fifth key, initial inspections. Fifth key, initial inspections. First, we defined the dream. Then, we drafted a blueprint and came up with an outline. Next, we demolished bad habits, limiting beliefs, and negative mindsets. Then, we got down to business, started ugly. Now, it's time for the initial inspections. Now that we've been at it for a while, we need to self-reflect. See what's working and what's not. Now that the initial work has begun, the initial habits have been formed, it's time to evaluate 
what is working and what's not. How are your morning and evening routines progressing? What areas are you struggling with? We all have certain aspects of these new habits that will fall into place somewhat naturally, while other habits, although seemingly simple and small, will continue to be a struggle. List three habits or routines that you continue to struggle with implementing. Don't make it harder than it needs to be. Now analyze why. What's holding you back? Chances are there's some aspect of this new habit that your personality is resisting. Is there an alternative solution? Is there another way? How are other people getting similar results from different means? Next, list three alternative solutions to get the results of the habit you are struggling with. Once you begin to make progress toward your goal, you may soon realize there's a lot more to achieving your dreams than you understood. There are many other skill sets that you need to develop in order to see success. This can come in the form of marketing, accounting, or even things like networking and developing new relationships. Things you never expected. In order to take the next step, you need to master these new skills. List three new skill sets you want to learn and master to grow to the next level. Next, reevaluate what's working and what isn't. It's time to course correct. Are you enjoying the process? Are you learning and growing at an acceptable rate? Do you find your days challenging and fulfilling? If so, then you're definitely on the right track. And if not, why not? What's missing? Is it a symptom of your situation, personality, or associations? Do you want to head in a completely different direction? Or do you simply need to be more patient? That's usually the case and often the most difficult to accept. Oftentimes a failure or lack of success is simply due to a lack of work and commitment. Make sure that you have fully committed your efforts before abandoning the plan as you refine your skills and hone your craft. Next, find a mentor. This is the best and fastest way to realize your dreams and goals. Having a great mentor is like having a secret playbook to success. Covet and nourish these relationships at every opportunity. These relationships are hard to find and difficult to establish. But here's how to do it. First, make a list of as many as you can. Each mentor will be a specialist at only one area you are learning. Having multiple mentors to learn from keeps you from being too reliant on one opinion. It'll help you improve in multiple areas at once and ensure that you're not being a burden or monopolizing the time of a person that you respect and admire. Plus, some mentors will turn you down. Some will not be the right fit. And the rest you will eventually outgrow as you continue to develop. With that in mind, continue to look for new mentors and role models, whether you have one right now or not. Finding a mentor is tough. Finding the right mentor is even harder. Um, I've, I have struggled most of my life to find some really good mentors. I've been blessed with some amazing people in my life, like my father and mother were my first mentors, obviously, like many of us, and they were tremendous. But above and beyond them, I've really struggled to find the right mentors for me. Um, but I will say one mentor that had a huge impact on my life, a man I'll never forget, was a man named Bobby Abrams. When I was getting into construction and learning all the trades and ins and outs of remodeling and renovations and all of that, Bobby took me under his wing. And he would spend time with me not just teaching me tricks and techniques for how to paint, how to cut, how to trim out general construction practices, but he also taught me about doing things the right way and taking the time and the attention to detail. And that's one of the first times where I learned that these little things mattered. Bobby was one of the first people to explain to me wh why it was important to do these things, things that people would never see, but to follow the right process and to do the right thing. And I'll always be grateful to Bobby and the impact that he had on my life not just from the construction standpoint, but from an overall being a man. And any good mentor will not only teach you 
what they know about their industry or their trade, but they'll also teach you a lot of things about being a better person and about being a better man in our case and these other ancillary concepts that aren't necessarily easily taught but more learned by example. If you're in a situation where you do not have access to the people that you want for mentors, the alternative is to get their knowledge. Learn what they are doing. This can be done primarily through books. Most successful people have written a book about their success, or they talk about it on podcasts, YouTube videos, or other digital formats. The bottom line is, if you want to learn from the best at what you want to do, learn from those who are already there. Find them, emulate them, and the pattern of success will repeat itself. Now, how to course correct. I try to think of my life as a ship or a plane. When we leave port or head off into the wild blue yonder, the possibilities are endless. The direction you can head out is yours to decide. But in order to get to your destination, you have to know where you want to go. Where do we want to land? Which city do we wish to arrive? Where do you want to go? Once you know where you want to end up, head out. But on any long journey, we have to plot a course, use the maps and instruments of navigation, and persevere to reach that final destination. Along the way, we must course correct. We must make adjustments, reevaluate. The ship or airplane never stop moving forward. They just adjust their direction. Almost always, the corrections are minor and the adjustments are simply fine-tuned. But all are necessary to end up where we want to be. Being fluid and flexible makes the journey successful and fun along the way. What are three adjustments or course corrections that you can make to help you realign with your original goals? This initial inspection process isn't a one-time thing. It's not a quick fix. It's something that we must add into our regular routine and our regular behaviors. As we continue to go down this course, we will have many opportunities to course correct and to make sure that we're on the right track. I recommend 90-day cycles. Every 90 days, taking the time to reevaluate what is working, what's not, where we were able to make progress, and where we're struggling. This constant reevaluation will keep us focused on not the process, but the end result. As we continue to evolve, as we continue to inspect and improve, that will prepare us for the next key, the finish work. So you're still here. Wow. Thanks for sticking around. So, what'd you think? What did I miss? What would you like to know more about? Who would you like to hear on the show? If you stuck around this long, maybe you won't mind giving me some feedback. And if you enjoyed the show, please take the time to share with your friends, on social media, or with anyone you think who might enjoy it. And last but not least, if you're ready to start living an extraordinary life, check out 8keystogreat.com, where you can craft your free blueprint to renovate your career, home, or lifestyle. The program is free, but you have to do the work to unlock each key. And finally, if you'd like to speak with me directly, you can book a free 30-minute Zoom call directly through my Calendly link on the contacts page. And in the meantime check out some of the other exciting interviews with ordinary people living extraordinary lives. Thanks for listening. Thanks for sharing. And most of all, thanks for just being you. I'm Nate G and we'll see you next week.